been in control of the deaf ministry with this mission group. And Curtis Young uh, was, went to the doctor just a few weeks ago. He had tiny things. But it, it just makes you, all your limbs get weak, 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 and weak. So it was about four years ago that he became interested in the deaf. and hearing churches also, and I, I wanted to show that you can sign dead. I don't sign that way, all right? When I preach in just a moment, you will see, I, I move around and I do this, and so I wanted to show hearing people the expression, okay? Okay, they're all up there now. All right. Up there is this. In Portuguese, this is a sign for sin. This is sin. All right? This one over here, you know, you understand that sign? You know, somebody hurt my feelings. <coughs> you know? This one, I am singing to my baby, putting my baby to sleep. Oh, Lord, Lord. Sunday morning I preached in the deaf church and then Sunday afternoon I preached again and gave the invitation. This lady came forward to be saved. That's the wife of the man who said, Man, not yet. Not yet. Pray it off, pray it off, pray it off. And uh, people have been praying for that couple for a long time and God blessed. Okay, next. I arrived in a new country. I searched. 
sign language books or CDs. I sometimes not have it, so I find a deaf person that's willing to teach me the sign. But when I arrived in
if I can find out about your death. That's it. Okay, no problem. So when we arrived at the city in Romania, we found this lady that was an interpreter for the deaf in that area, and we went to her home, and I, during our conversation, I asked her, I said, do the deaf have a Bible study class
sector, and you will notice no tie. No tie. This was a national holiday, and on a national holiday, men do not tie. None. I was the only one in that church that had a tie on that day. Now, when you go into Peru, and you go to a big, big meeting, and you're sitting there, you see the person with the tie, he's the speaker. And as soon as he finished speaking, boom, the tie comes off. <laughs> and anyway, next. Now, when I say Kenya, you know that's in Africa, right? Africa, you think of wild animals, right? Snakes and tigers and yes, you know all of those kinds of things. I was almost ready to come home, and I had never seen any wild animals, none. I had seen some dogs. I had seen some goats. I had seen some sheep. I had seen some donkeys. No wild animals. And so we're in this park, and we're walking, looking at the flowers and all, and I see this, and I said, oh, that's an elephant, right? It's painted on a rock. <laughs> uh, next. That is I.
after we were in the car going home and he said, would you do it again? I said, yes, but not today. <laughs> Tomorrow, okay, fine, we'll do it again. But, but we just travel all over. This is on a road that you cannot ride in a car, right? I have a picture of a road. Next, yeah, now click on that. So that I want you to see this road. Now, this is a better road. I mean, cars on this road. The other road was not. Click on it. Go to the next.
I got up and I had already drawn on the board and I began to preach preach moving back and forth and I noticed the principal said so when I finished
Jacob had moved down into Egypt with uh, Joseph to take care of their needs. And now they were in bondage. They were building. It was hard, difficult times for them. They were in bondage. They were slaves. And you know what I noticed? That yes, people all over the world were in bondage. And in many, many places, years God was silent nothing no word from God no prophet nothing 400 years they felt that God didn't hear and in many many places the deaf people feel this hearing person this hearing God is not for the deaf they don't care for about God but in many many countries that's really true church doesn't care about the death and they're just left to like uh, animals. They just stand and we talk with them about God for a bit. They have a sign and they point up, 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 and that could be heaven, it could be God, or, you know, anything. Uh, they just have no thought about uh, God in their life. They've grown up. Most of them have never had a Bible in their life. They've never gone to Jesus to die on the cross to be buried, to raise again and to live and to offer to all people who will come to him by faith and receive him as their savior, forgiveness of sins, eternal life and a hope of going to heaven in the future. And that's good for the deaf and for the sick. But I want you to notice there's something more. God over here says, I see, I see, I hear, I have a plan. The Jewish people said, he's forgotten us, he doesn't care about us. The deaf over here, bondage to sin. No church, <coughs> no Bible, no God. Just what we have here on earth, that's all. And all the time, God says, I have a plan, I have a plan. Something is missing now. So he said to Moses, I want you to go into Egypt and deliver my people and bring them out to the promised land. And you remember Moses said, okay, let's go. We're excited about this. Yes, yes, yes. Is that what he said? Finally said, I can't talk. God said, I'll send Aaron to you. He can be your mouth and then go. So Moses said, All right, I'll go now. And the people won't accept me. Pharaoh won't accept me, but I'll go. And uh, he did. And you remember the story of God and his deliverance the Jewish nation out of bondage.
many times we focus on our area, Jacksonville, that's your area, that's where you live, you focus on that, you forget that deaf people live every place in the world, and we are looking for men, men.
My wife is the smart one in our family. Uh, my wife is a nurse, RN, and also has a master's degree in Bible counseling. Very, very smart. And uh, uh, we got married in 1960, 53 years. We just had a, a same woman. Chattanooga or Chattanooga, Chattanooga, Tennessee. We live in Georgia, but we travel back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, all special meetings going back and forth, back and forth. It takes us about eight minutes from our home to arrive at the church. We live very short in Georgia, one block. All right, next. Our obligation responsibility is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every person. Seven point thirteen billion people live on the earth right now. Seven point thirteen billion. I don't know how many zeros. It's it's a long line.
I preach. I, I preach like I'm doing right now. I preach in hearing churches, deaf churches, combined with deaf and hearing. Doesn't make any difference. I preach. I love to preach. I really love to preach. I love to teach. I love to talk about the deaf. And I try to fix it all together in one place. Next. My wife is now teaching more than one our Christian day school that's connected with our church. She goes there four days a week to teach more than 100 young people who are learning this time. Isn't that great? Now, you can work with her. Next. I also travel far, far to 